you got three first degree robberies. Huh? I said, okay, 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 okay. I said, well, where's my bond? The man said, you got three lock bonds. I said, oh, shit, this shit just got real. From that day forward, we never returned home. I did six years. My husband did 13. We both got a 20 split five for the state, which we had already been locked up going back and forth to court. That's how mine really was five years, 11 months. I just say shit. And he got his extra time at the feds because of the gun. And I always tell you, if you're going to tell something, you got to tell the truth. And you can't tell the story and leave bits and bits and pieces out of it. So I just didn't say anything. Because I didn't want to be the one that was implicating him coming in there with that gun. Wish they had already found the gun in the house and the two cell phones. So guess what? We got a first degree robbery for one cell phone. A first degree robbery for the glasses that I took off the girl head, and another first degree robbery for the other cell phone. So to that person who made that live, get your information and your facts straight, baby. The one that said that I put Lonzo in jail because he wanted to come and get his clothes, and uh, I wouldn't let him get his clothes, so he kicked the back door in, and I put him, get your information straight. And I went and did time also. And like I said, the gun is what changed the whole course of the case. But not in that time did I blame Lonzo. I always blame myself. <laughs> like I said, when I came home back to my kids, I blamed myself for leaving them. I blame myself for doing the same thing my mama had did. I blame myself for missing time. I blame myself for hurting them. I blame myself. But I was told that Lonzo blamed me. His family blamed me. I blame myself. So to the lady who asked that I have a warning sign, I guess I had a warning sign. I had a verbal no, a, a red flag. But I guess I didn't want to believe it. I'm losing internet. Oh, I'm sorry that you're losing internet. Oh, yeah, y'all can encourage me to go to uh, counseling because my story, yes, is way more than just being shot in the face. It's a whole bunch of stories within me that hurts. It's a, it's a lot of stories that's in me that I think from my past led up to things of today. I've been through, like I tell you, I've been through a lot of as I say, trauma. I've been through a lot of incidents. I, that incident right there blamed me for tearing up my whole family. I blame myself. So yeah, I got a lot of hurt, pain, mm -hmm. obstacles, or whatever you want to call it. And I don't have just a story. I have stories. And I think anybody human or anybody in his life ain't just got one story, especially if they've been living, breathing, because you have different stories.
You can have a story from your childhood, your adolescence, when you first got married, when you first left home, how you thought things were going to be, how you had to hit your head, then how you met your first lover, how y'all uh, separated. You, I'm pretty sure people got a lot of stories to tell. Ain't nobody just got no one incident that, that didn't happen. What year was this? I went to prison in 2009 and got out in 2015. Y'all had history. Yes, we did have history. And when he came home, I felt like we would have been on the same page. Or trying to work towards the same page. I didn't feel like, you know, but when he came home, I gave him the option, you know, to do what he pleased because I wasn't no saint. I had did what I wanted to do out here, you know. And then a man that's been gone 13 years. And freshly getting home, you know, you think he missed something. Then he's 10 years behind a whole decade, whole century mentally. And we ain't even going to talk about the physically part. I'm trying to see where was that coming. I can't catch it. But... That's neither here nor there. So now y'all know why I went to prison. And they charged us with um, three first degree robbers, which made us violent. Because of that. Like I said, he dropped the children out that morning. And they came back. It's, it's thumbing out that bad. But I want y'all to pray for me. Yeah, damn, that's messed up. And yeah, and the thing I say, I always got it in black and white. I couldn't believe it either. Me and Timmy, I got first degree bribery charges from uh, three, first, three first degree bribery charges. <laughs> what they do that day? Who robbed somebody? <laughs> But it was the gun that made it bribery. And that was in 2009. So, 2022, I get shot at with a gun. Then get shot in my face with a gun. And I'd be damned if the police ain't said just this week when I was going down there trying to find out about the truck and all that. It, the man wasn't trying to talk in front of me because he was trying to see what information I knew. And the lady came back after she was running the tag numbers and all that or whatever and said that they found more guns. So you was infatuated with guns. But I never blamed you for the course of the case changing or nothing. But I, because I looked at it as he was just coming in trying to protect his wife. He didn't know what was going on in the house. So I felt like that was my foolishness. Once again. And then I told y'all way in the beginning that. Honey, I know what. I can't read this. I, I want to blind yourself. It's called life things happen. Oh yeah, life do, things do happen. But I got on that because we were talking about uh, just warning signs in general. Because somebody had asked me that. And I guess that's a part of, you know, like you said, domestic violence. Do you see warning signs? Or what, what do they do? And they ate, oh yeah, and, I, and when I was when he was drunk, I would always his mouth would get red, disrespect. But they say a uh, drunk person sleeps sober, man. So you better listen to them while they drunk. They'll tell you how they really feel. 
But then when you wake up the next morning, you don't remember what you even said or did. And you promise and you swear that it's going to get better and you're going to get help or whatever. All the way up until that next evening when it's time to get that next bottle. So I guess we all see warning signs. But no. When things ain't right. Sometimes I guess we overlook them. Sometimes I guess Nah, this, he can't hate me, but he can't dislike me that much or have jealousy. I don't know. But that's, shoot, I can't say that's the end of that because that's actually part of why I got shot. Or whatever. I mean, if a, if a person is really down for you, I love you, or whatever, I ain't never grabbed no gun. First of all, I, ain't, I don't play with guns. I don't touch them. Because my temper was hot. I don't want no gun around me. But, you know, it's certain things that don't even come to mind. You know what I'm saying? Certain things that you don't even do. Why would you be shooting at somebody? And then, why would you even have a gun? My husband's six five. Two hundred and some pounds. You can whoop me easily. I ain't, I ain't gonna say you whoop me easily, but you can handle me. But we weren't even physically fighting, so I mean that's it, it, it's just a lot of questions. It's just a lot of I don't know. But I don't be wanting to think about that either. And who wanna think about that and, and and say that you really did hate me? Or you but it was like I guess a love hate. Because I believe you love me. I just believe he was caught up in his mind. That's why I say you can't let the devil get in your mind and dance around and play or whatever because the devil, he's seeking whoever he can devour. And he was happy. He was happy. But he couldn't have me. He couldn't have me physically, and he couldn't have me mentally. So you mad about that? But you gained you one, you got you one when you got one. So, and I hate that you that he wasn't strong enough to fight him off or resist or call on the word or whatever. But that's why he wanted to be in those streets so he could be itself or do what he wanted to do. Now, let me through talking about that. Let me through talking about nothing. Y'all be saying, I want y'all tell me something about y'all, about me, I just did. And now y'all know why I went to prison. But if you go back, that also said why that when the detective came up there yeah, and they made this case State versus Alonzo Barrea, not Ebony Mixon versus Alonzo Barrea. And after I gave my record and all that, the detective said, I looked in your jacket and your background or whatever you say, and I see where you went to prison. I read the details of the case. And he said, you can't protect him this time. I remember that time I said, I ain't know how I protected him before. Because it was something that happened 
that I felt was actually my fault. So how was I protecting him when he only came to help me? But hey, that's another situation up on the bridge. That, that was something I guess I had to do. And go through. And we both had to go. How he passed. Remind me. Natasha, you real late to, you real fresh to the page, ain't it? But um he passed away um April the seventh when the um US Marshals and the police surrounded his hotel room from um the attempted murder case that he was facing and he killed himself. April 7th, two days before my daughter's birthday, my 21st, her 21st birthday, killed the whole spirits. My children are affected by this. There was, they was like this. Even my daughter told me. When he came home, he was he wasn't the same. Then she said, Mom, "What do love gonna be talking about?" She said, "Cause sometimes he got my phone. He just be talking, talking, talking." She said, "I don't even be knowing the thing." He said, "He said a tough ass out. He probably was drunk." And also. A life after being incarcerated, and I'm talking about me to try to get off of him. But it was hard when I came home. I had to adjust. I had to adapt. I had to accept all those no's. When I first came home, I I came home and I slept on my auntie couch to be in the house with my kids. And y'all know every woman need their own house. <laughs> I had gained so much weight, I couldn't even wear my draw no more. I had one little laundry basket, the little circle one on the floor, not the big stand-up one. Okay, we're going to get that right. And that's all I had. I was so proud I had got my first little saved up, got my first little car, Honda Accord. I was happy. Got me a job at McDonald's. I would make about one hundred and twenty three dollars or hundred and some dollars every week. That's why I tell y'all, it don't matter if you making eight dollars or eighteen, God still gonna have to provide. But I was never too much. During that time, I went back. That's when I told you I went back to Virginia College. But God made a way. He always made a way. He always provide. He always pulled me through. He always gave me the extra strength I need. My head ain't funny no more since we've been talking. And we're going to claim in Jesus' name, that they rain slack up too. But if it don't, I still got to go. Cause my boy going to the house, going to get his certificate. Sometimes also people have health issues and may not have a long time to live. So if they are going to die, they want to also take the one they love out also. That's Clara Meekins. Ebony right where it comes to mind. I'm a, um, I know you, you talking about that book. Oh, I'm sorry that your live keeps skipping. Just stop it. 
I mean, if it keeps giving, you might just have to come back and watch it when it get through. I'm sorry, baby. You didn't say, you didn't say that two times, so you is upset. Do you still love him? Keisha Ruffin. Oh, Keisha Ruffin. Yes. I do. And that's probably about the stupidest shit I said. They said you too. Yes, I still love him. Am I in love with him? No. I may always, I ain't going to say I may always still love him. But, yes, I do. Sometimes I don't understand why, how. That's why I guess when I saw him at the front row, all my emotions came up. And y'all want to know something else that was crazy and stupid? I know Miss Jackie on here because she stay up here. That's, you know, that's one who came to the funeral. And my son, when they closed that casket and got ready to roll it, I hollered. I broke down. Because that was it. You can't come back from death. Gone forever. <laughs> so, I guess, yeah, I still love him and I've been forgave him. Not saying nobody was right or wrong because. Lord, I want to apologize. And to anybody on this line, I want y'all to apologize to anybody for anything that y'all have done. I want to apologize for my sins. I want to ask for forgiveness for my sins, my known sins, knowingly and unknowingly. Anybody that I've harmed, been rude to, been smart with, disrespected. <laughs> Anything. I want to apologize because I got to get things right. And what made it easier, like to ask for forgiveness or start apologizing to people because I had to go back and apologize to my aunt and tell her that I appreciated her for being a mother. To my kids when I couldn't be there, when I couldn't even be a mother to my own kids. She just got too damn attached to little lunch over me. My girl, honey, she went standing them, them little smart mouth. She said, Yeah, I just like yeah, mama. <laughs> So today in front of a thousand, 1.5 viewers, Ebony Mason want to apologize for her known sins and her unknown sins. Cleanse me, Lord. Let me not make the same foolish mistake over and over and over again. Let not my suffering be in vain. Let me get it right. Let me not be selfish. Let my heart get gentle. Don't let nothing of my past, 
my situation mm -hmm. now, Kerm. Don't let them feel my heart. I don't want my heart to turn black. I don't want my heart to be mad, angry at nobody. I don't want to have no resentment in my heart. But not tonight, tonight, just for lost my situation, anything. I'm just asking God to cleanse me, help me. Day by day, minute by minute, second by second. Because we all are flesh and fall short. And I said, what street is your post office on? <laughs> oh, Lord. I am not blow my nose so bad, but I'm scared. Y'all know they told me at the doctor I couldn't blow my nose, and I still can't drink out of straws for real, but I be doing it in restaurants sometimes. I'm going to blow my nose. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but, yeah, but that's what I wanted to say and get out of my chest this morning. My son kind of touched me last night, and um, I'm, I'm better now, so I can ask him, was he worried about me last night, or was it just, he was in his feelings about the conversation we had about his dad. I told y'all I, I wanted to get him comfortable. And I would eat some little stuff in now. But he kind of hit me with the flex last night. <laughs> because he was too real. And his real was my real. His reality was my reality. And we felt the same way. I guess it hurt me hearing it come from him. Lord, forgive us all for all sin that we have committed. You are walking through our word of God and be obedient. I just did that, sis. Amen, sister girl. Amen. Praise God. I love you. Amen, God. I love y'all too. And I'm going to get on this line because I'm going to get on up. I don't even know what time it is. I'm going to get on up. So I'm going to throw up. And we're going to get ready for church. That's all I know. Bad today. I really do got to get out of here because I'm in my feelings. I was in my feelings. Y'all stay with all the people that I ran into. They really noticed me. They know who I was. Or what had happened. And it was one girl. That's what I was telling y'all. She had. I got her picture in my phone. I posted. A little while. When I get through with this. I posted the people that I ran into yesterday. So I told y'all one of them. She did a selfie. I think she kept that picture. But one of the girls had a little scar right there. Or whatever. And she was telling me that she had just got out of my lab and stuff like that. But when we took our picture, I told her, she said, I'm so glad to meet you. She said, I'm so glad you made it. I don't know where her scout was for. I don't know where it come from. I, don't, I didn't ask her. But I said, I'm glad we made it. And she hugged me even tighter. I don't have to know where your scout come from. How you get it? Or who did it? We all got scars. Whether they visible or not. But I'm asking you today, Lord, heal us all from our scars. Especially the ones we try to cover up that nobody could see. I 
I love y'all. Continue to pray for me and my family. This week coming up right here is my doctor's appointment and stuff. So I got to prepare myself to get ready to go back to the hospital. So y'all yeah, pray for me. Tell him his auntie here for him. Y'all yeah, bless, get ready for church. He like his mama real true and honest. Oh yeah. He is. But I guess he hasn't had nobody ask him or talk to it about. And like I said, I have to get him comfortable. Because if you just sit down and ask a person, well, a long time, he'll just be like, mm-mm, mm-mm. I said, it don't seem real. It seemed crazy to say my mama, I mean my daddy, shot my mama in the face and then killed himself. I was trying to see if I had glasses on time, but when he put the glasses on, in the car at night time. It came back to my mind what he said at that table. He invisible. Don't nobody see him with them glasses on. No, son. No, son. Even on the football field, big as he is. I used to get mad at it. He won't even like talking nobody. The folks be getting up out the ground, he be having them up out the ground. We called him a humble giant. That's what it's called. <laughs> I'm a humble giant. His heart is pure. He innocent. I want him to continue that. I want him to have a fair chance at life. And I want his mishap to mess up his future. That's why when I said my special prayer, even before his daddy did that to himself, I said, Lord, don't let my son feel no guilt. or harbor any ill feelings. Because I don't want my son to see me suffering and then get mad at his dad. I start hating. But we don't make it. And God gonna snack up this rain. Look like it's getting a little brighter outside. I don't care. And I know I put on some tennis shoes and go up in there to have our feet covered up. But we going to church. And the devil can't stop that. He can let the bottom drop off. 
son ain't never had to go to a church. Like I told y'all, we went to church and uh, they just go, they sit down. Mm. But I want him interacting. So I guess this morning the topic would be lungs on. And then we got the big one though. And my past and my future where I end up in prison. That hurt. Emotionally. That was the hardest thing that I ever had to do. And it wasn't about the time. Because I had been in, going to juvenile. And everything I had went to. One group home when I was young. I wanted to stay at the group home. I was having so much fun. We were going to a public school. But I had got best trips. I had got me a little boyfriend. And everything. I had my time was up at the group home. I wanted my auntie to pay. Or to see if I could stay longer. <laughs> it was in Vincent, Alabama. So it wasn't about the time. But I had never left my kids. Before, like that. And that hurt. And then my husband got caught up in that. So everybody, you know, everybody was devastated. And I always think about my kids. But I told y'all I got one brother. And he stayed with me also. I kind of took, I took him up under my wing. Why nobody put me in here? I actually left home when I was like 16. I made him like 10. My brother had a real bad car accident, so he had a halo on his head. He was at my grandma's house. He stayed about two days. He called, he said, Baby, I want to come with you. I said, Grandma, they're going to kill me. You got to come down them steps. That thing on your head, you can't be moving and hopping. I was scared. He said, but I want to come with you. <laughs> got it. <laughs> I got into it with my grandma, my two aunties. I fed it. I washed them up because I ain't buried the prior part. Now you sitting on the toilet school, boy, you better put your own hand down. And I'm finna go out the bathroom. Now you got the rest of it. Took him to his doctor's appointment every time. <laughs> right now. Me and my brother don't even talk. I actually got to fight on Thanksgiving. And before the fight, we hadn't talked in two years. I was getting out the car, and you know how children run to you. <coughs> and, uh, I was out there playing. His son was saying, so, 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 so. and I was saying, what? I said, you gonna give me some food? You gonna get something? I'll mess with him about whatever. Then the little girl ran over there because he got some twins. And my brother said, get away from that bitch. Who? What? Who? What? what? And that's what started. That's what did. Thanksgiving. That's how I came in my grandma's house. Wrapped up with my brother on Thanksgiving. It hurt me to my heart. All because of me 
I had told him I was going to pay a bill for him. The next day, I had to get the lights and stuff cut on at the shop. But his wife called me. So they're early going off and yada, 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 yada. So she knocked the blessing and I was doing something for you, not her. So she had no business calling my phone anyway. But I didn't realize this until I was in the hospital. When I told y'all I cried out. Believe here. Uh, and my mama told me I couldn't go. And I laid there and I laid there. And I remember I was 19 then. And I had went to my mama church. And the preacher pulled me to the side after church. And he said, you know, what your mama prayed for on her dying bed. And I said, what? And he said, if Evan is all right, I know Matthew going to be all right. I thought they was talking about financially. But even with that, um, I got to my brother and asked for forgiveness. Because I know I always felt bad and guilt about leaving my children. But I forgot he was like a child. He was like one of my children too. I never thought about him or how he felt. I love my brother. And I don't care what happened, who was wrong, and who was right. Just like my brother needed me. I need him. <laughs> but he also got to grow up. I don't know how to owe you nothing, man, too. But I was always his guidance. His backbone. His go-to person. We always been together. We was only two crying together about my mama. So, guess what? That's another thing I got to do. And like I said, I just told y'all how the fight started. <laughs> Why well, I started? Because I well, I. He asked me to pay a five hundred and some dollar light bill. But then when me and his wife got into it, you flipped the script on me. You told me just because me and your wife got into it, I ain't gonna help my nieces and nephews and how did you use this guilt trip? But when we got to fight on Thanksgiving and my brother big too. I was really not trying to physically fight him because I knew if I physically fought him, it was going to keep going on and on and on. You feel me? So, he was slamming me and everything. Now, when I got tired, though, and we was over there by my grandma's house, and I got on top of him, this boy caught an asthma attack in the middle of a fight. I could have choked him out, put my hand around anything, punched him out. Y'all know what I did. I asked him, what was the problem? Why you hate me so much? Why you fight me? He said, because you don't love me. And you never did. He said, you left me.
I let him go. So yeah. I got a lot of things that be on my mind. But I better try to get my family back together. And that's what I was trying to also do with my husband. But I done fought too hard. Lost too much. Went through too much. But it makes some family. We will be on one accord. We will stand as one. We will be a family. My grandma will know that we're going to be all right when she leave here. Because that's what's important to my grandma family. Them Sunday dinners important to my grandma. My grandma died day or tomorrow. Who? Who? Who we going to have? What we going to have with everybody at odds? Mm -mm. Nah. We finna get this right. And I'm sorry. Like I said, I was 19. I'm 30. I'm just not realizing what my mama meant 20 years later. For Ebony to be alright mentally. Spiritually. And I would be strong enough to make sure Matthew was all right. Not financially, because he's broken. He's hurt also. Just like I said, everybody ain't strong. It's the next person. I've always been Matthew's backbone. And if anybody on here, that can, that can tell him what share with him. Ain't no secret. Ain't nothing to hide. He got me on block right now. I've been on block for two years. But for my uncle friend, he came down here. I, I said, hey, Matt, do you, hey. you know. The children ran to me again. And then he got his baby girl named after me. She ran straight to my arm. But he didn't have nothing to say this time. But I got to warming up. I got to put my pride to the side. And my personal feelings and emotions. And go to my brother as humble as I can. Ask for forgiveness and try to make things right. what we're supposed to do. So, with that being said, I think I've been it enough. I think I've told y'all, let y'all in my world. I know what I have to do. <laughs> and then I said, like I said, they say, Ermy, you so strong and Ermy. And then I said, well, if I'm the strongest, well, I'll just put out who I lean on when I get weak. Who do I turn to when I need help? Who have y'all always turned on Ebony? When nobody else was there. God. God is my strength. That's my backbone. My grandma too. But I can't worry about her. I weigh her down with something. But it hurt her the way my brother had. She don't even blame me. She blame him. But I don't want nobody to blame nobody. I'm going to get that right. 
Y'all know my brother has not said nothing to me, even about me being shot. Mm -hmm. Maybe on my guess, he said, that lucky motherfucker, she, she had bounced back. She always do. See, I walk around. Like I'm God or something. Oh. Yeah, because I don't have to ask nobody for nothing. That ain't my fault. You need to do better with your finances. But I got a lot of stuff that I got to do. That's a lot of people. Damn. <laughs> so, as y'all continue to watch me, y'all continue to see me grow. As y'all continue to watch me, y'all continue to pray for me. As y'all continue to watch me see these things that I speak into existence. As y'all continue to watch me, that's why I say I let y'all see the good and the bad. I ain't all that. I ain't got no perfect life. I ain't had no perfect life. I done been through hell and back, but I'm still here. And while you're still here, you got a chance to get things right with whoever. Because at the end of the day, it don't matter. At the end of the day, I wish I could help my mom. I wish I could see her face. I wish she could cuss me out, but I'll never get that chance while I'm still here on earth, I guess. So many mistakes, so many. I wish I could, I wish I would, I wish I would have did this, I wish I would have said that, I wish I want to let this get in the way. But how about we fix it? Because at the end, it ain't going to matter. We're going to be gone. Even we're gone, so I said, I wish I want to win up here. It's a lot. But I'm woke, man. It's time for Lonzo to get woke. And I have released. And just like I said, I want y'all to pray for me. I let out some real serious issues today. For real. They say these are the issues of my heart. So y'all kinda break with me, touch and agree. Ask God to continue to work on me and mold me. And when I go to my brother, I don't want to talk about. And this is what I want you to leave y'all with this. When I go to my brother and I just told y'all why, how, what, when. What's the next holiday, Mother's Day? They probably be dying here for Grandma for Mother's Day. And when I go to him, and when y'all go to somebody asking for forgiveness or trying to get things right, don't bring up nothing they did. Look at the part you played in it. Only, I'm only asking for forgiveness for what I did. I'm asking for forgiveness for leaving you. I'm sorry for leaving you. I'm sorry for not thinking about how you felt. I'm sorry for not being there for you when you really needed me. I'm sorry for not being the sister that you need. I'm sorry for letting my flesh rise and turn my back on you. 
Also, as you turn, you turn it back on me, but I can't bring that up. Don't bring that up because it only makes the other person mad or defensive when you talking about what they did or what they said. Don't come telling me what I did and what I said. So when I go to my brother, I'm on there apologizing for my wrongdoing and asking forgiveness for me and my actions. And that don't happen overnight. But those are my plans. And Lord, I need you to continue to work on me, work on my heart, on my mind. Give me the right words to say. Hold on, you all these tissues. Up. <laughs> Give me the right words to say. You got some other day. When I see him face to face. Because this ain't no telephone conversation. I want to hug my brother. I want to let him know I'm here. Wish I can hug some other people. But they gone. So before, and life is short, y'all. Like I said, things can happen in the blink of an eye. And it'll change your whole life. So get things right. Why you still have a chance? Figure it out. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. But I'm striving for better. I love y'all. I want y'all to keep praying with me. I really do. Gotta get out of this life. <laughs> That's what was flowing from your heart. Vicky Parts. What you mean? That's what was flowing from my heart. The issues of my heart. That, that was flowing. My heart. And everything that's perfect comes from you. Is our fool? That's what you want to say. I love y'all again. Like I said, my mind. I'm hard. Fool. worry about other people um Juice Jones say positive in Latasha and that part I love you love you I bless you love walk with me Lord walk with me hold my hand hold my hand from Oakland we are praying for a miracle. Your next encounter with your brother. Can't wait for the testimony. I pray for the healing strength, God, His grace, forgiveness, humbleness, and love in your heart. You are special. Take that to He. Natasha Allen, you speaking volumes. I was just speaking the truth. Just speaking the truth. You got no Bible in front of me. Alexis said me, yes, I do need a hug. But hey. I 
second one. Yeah, that's right. Denise Mars said, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Amen. Thank God for what he has done for you. Half of us know we don't even both be here. If you want for grace and mercy. And he has no, and I ain't saying you, we deserve it. So thank God for what he, what he has done for you. Thank God for what he brought you from. Thank God for what could have happened, but he didn't allow it to happen. Thank God for your future. Thank God for your kids not having to go through what you went through. Thank God for breaking the generational curses. Thank God for speaking. We're going to speak to life and not death into our situation, our children's situation. <laughs> Lord, change the hearts of the people in this world. It's not the world. It's the people in their hearts. Let me tell you, that's something tripped me out. Y'all remember COVID came? COVID, whatever that was. But I never recall anything that's happened in this world, in this history, that had the whole world shut down. Hallelujah. God shut the whole world down. Y'all think we living in the last days? Yeah, we is. And you know what I told my friend? I kept saying, I kept saying, I kept saying. I said, God shut the whole world down to get our attention. Our, meaning me too. I ain't even myself about nothing. To get our attention. We still wouldn't yield. We still wouldn't, as my words say, surrender. This nigga done shut the whole world down. <laughs> all power. But yeah, yeah, I know what time it is. Y'all see where I'm going with this. But I ain't even finna go there because it's time to get up. Okay? 2020 COVID. So I'm coming in the air. That air. What? It's airborne. Everybody running to get Clorox and disinfected. <laughs> Clorox and disinfected. But when God get ready to call you, he don't care about no Clorox and no disinfected. We were spared. But he wanted our attention. Shut the thing down, close down, jobs or whatever. He wanted families reunited. Hmm. I kept saying, surrender, 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 surrender. It's been in my spirit. I can't. And then y'all know what? The Sunday before this happened, I had just went back to the altar. And rededicated my life. Maybe that's what helped me. I saw that Friday when I got shot. Mm -hmm. Who knows? I'll never know. But I know who didn't let me die. And I know who didn't let me go nowhere. And I know who woke me up with all sense. I ain't missed a beat. I know who didn't have me on a breathing machine. Mm -hmm. I know who... Um, didn't have no catheter in me. I know who 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 woke me up with all limbs moving. Hello, I know who woke me up and I ain't have to have no blood transfusion. Had lost all that blood. I know who did that. Mm hmm. We need it right now. Because y'all do know it's back. It's there. It's all there. The whole thing. The one they said was gone. I don't care about no swelling. I don't care about none of it. Because like I told y'all, God is going to do something. And it's going to surprise me. It's going to shock me. And he's going to do it right in front of y'all. That's why my audience is so big or something. I ain't, I ain't trying to be funny, but I ain't. I don't want to say that I ain't nobody spectacular. I got folks from Africa. 
Now this but I got almost a hundred thousand views. And you wanna know why? Y'all wanna really know why? Because he said I'm gonna say somebody to you. I'm gonna show the world that I am God through you. You know. The inmate, the felony, the drug addict, the one who lost cut of his children. You know what I'm saying? Through you. I don't want no perfect person. No saint. Everybody that Jesus wrote, it was crooks. And then he even told Peter, you're going to deny me three times for the for end of 12 o'clock, nigga. For the, for the clock even straight. Fake. Fake and phony. But you riding with me every day. Every day. I love you, Ebony. I never go against you. You my friend. But you will deny me. You will go against me. So if they did it to him, yeah, I know they gonna do it to us. Hello? Oh, okay. But, hey man, yes, we were spared. He wanted us to surrender. Toya, Toya Colwood, you already see where I'm going with this, but I'm finna get out of here. But I'll be talking about God and situations. And every situation I talk about, please believe, God gave me the strength to make it through. God brought me through. God delivered me. Or God kept my mind. Everything I talk about at the end of the story is going to be something about God. Because I know where my help and my strength come from. I know who delivers me. I know who keeps me. I know who holds me. Wrap their loving arms around me when I'm feeling lonely or in that prison cell by myself. And when I'm in that prison cell, it means I'm in segregation now because I did something wrong. And you know, when you, let me tell y'all one more thing, I'm finna get out of here. I, segregation, you know, that's supposed to be punishment, but you're being said by yourself one on one. Ain't nobody in there but you and God. That one I used to really get in my Bible. I read Romans about three times, one time I had got locked up, about 45 days. But when you come out of segregation, you be happy. You be pumped up. You be ready. Don't let the face. You can't let get you mad or nothing. So when a lot of stuff going on in my world out here, guess what I tell my friend, Miss One? I said, baby, I got to go into isolation. I got to go into isolation. She didn't never understand what it was until her son died. The one I supposed to took to the funeral. The next day, but I got shot. The one I told them to call in the emergency room. When I did wake up one of them time, I said, hey, come here. I told them to call her. Because I knew I wasn't going to be able to take her to the funeral. And that was going to worry her and kill her to death. If she would have heard it in the streets that I had been shot in my face, her mind would have went crazy. Just like my children. My children didn't want to come and see me. They were scared. So when a lot of stuff going on in y'all world, and y'all start getting hit from the left and the right and the left and the right, and you be like, hold up, Lord, now, hold up. Time to go into isolation. That I means one-on-one -on -one with him. No more distractions. No nothing. And it's time to get in that word and build yourself back up. Feel yourself back up. And another song I used to listen to. Y'all know I can't sing. I don't care. And uh, it used to be. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself. Sometimes. 
you have to speak victory during your test. No matter how you feel, speak the word and you will be here. Speak over yourself. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Yeah, I know I ain't finna mess up that latest song no more. But all right. I love y'all. Going to church next thing y'all will see. I got mine last week. Why I joined the church? I joined another church. Because this is the church that I will attend with my son. So I told y'all I did. I used to go to Church of Highland, and I went to Church of Highland because Church of Highland was faithful to me. When I was in prison, they were faithful to the Word, and they came in and brought the Word. No other church. And I said what I said. I could talk about them being, um, about the money, or whatever, however, whatever, races, however, whatever. And they were mostly white folk. There wasn't no black folk down there, coming down there, seeing us every week. I said I said what I said. Uh huh. So when I came home, I was faithful to them. But now it's a new season, a new turnabout. It ain't about me. My son has to go to this church. My son read, and he said he's going to get his certificate today. And we got to go get some frying. And that's what it is. The end. I love y'all. Be good. I done kept y'all on here enough. I guess this was Sunday morning worship, but this was Sunday school. But um, we're going to get ready to get up and go to service in the name of Jesus. Bye-bye. See y'all later. I love y'all so much. Y'all know I can't read all these comments. No, give me a red popsicle at me. All right, man. All right, y'all. All right, because y'all know that's my happy spot. I'm going to get up the popsicle. Hold on. Mother, good morning. And y'all know I can't do, I ain't got no red, I got green though. This is my happy place. Now I'll read some of y'all comments. Why I uh, eat my popsicle then? Anything y'all want to ask? Anything y'all want to say? Whatever. We're going to do this while we eat this um, popsicle. Oh! Marcy Pine Green. That's your favorite song. Well, when we hang up, I want you to go play it. And think about me. In a jail cell. Hallelujah. Lonzo! I don't hear you. Y'all know I got a little dying milk. Now who told me to go get the pops up? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just remember, giants, they do fall. Oh, everybody on that. That's my encouraging song to Ebony. Um, encourage yourself in the Lord. Everybody like that song, huh? I know. You know about I won't complain. Oh, yeah, I won't complain. All right, son. Good morning. I love you. What time it is? You still sleeping? Well, let's see what time it is. I don't know what time it is. But I see the sun coming out and I think I have not talked in a long time. So I think it's time for me to get up. It's eight. Eight zero zero. Or eight something. Seven fifty one. No, that ain't no seven fifty one. Nah, boy, don't look at that clock on that microwave. You tricking me. 
Look at the clock on my phone. That boy said eight zero zero. No, I know it ain't no eight o'clock. I was eight o'clock when I was talking to yeah. him. Yep, but I like back to the thing where the girl was saying, um, do I know I won't complain? Yes, sir. Hey, guess what? I ain't got nothing to complain about. I won't complain. God been good to me. It's about 10. It's 10. Oh, I gotta go. We gotta go. Ten o'clock. We got 45 minutes. Well, we really got left to 11 o'clock. The church start 11 15, 11 30. But we got one hour. Exactly. Go on. Um, jump in that shower. Y'all get me on the live. I haven't been talking to Mr. forever. When, I did the live yesterday and missed the post office about they closed at 12. I got there at 12, everything. Um... Sharon returned and said, yes, Lord, God, I'll keep the happy spot. Yeah, just the happy spot. <laughs> What's the name of the song? I was just saying, encourage yourself. You need to hear it. Well, baby, you better go to YouTube. If you ain't got go to YouTube. Type in encourage yourself right now. They gonna man, I eat this pop sugar. I'm be I'm be moving so fast. I'm get dressed. I'm be so re I'm get ready so quick. Get my energy. I what song? I can't. I don't want to. I can't put no songs on the background. Wait a minute. We get to share a pop sugar. Oh, you said you eat your pop sugar too. Okay, that's why you want to talk about that red one. Yes, I love that song, that girl. I like the banana and the pineapple kind. Yeah. My niece was at Death Door. That's what sign you swap for. But she was at Death Door. But God must have closed the door. Huh. She ain't going in that dish. Hallelujah. And what? The devil meant for bad guys to turn around and. Be all for your good. All for your good. Mm -hmm. Um, Penella Cruz, we sing encourage yourself every morning. I know. Look, somebody talking about it's 951 in Wisconsin. Well, baby, we on the same time. That's my jam. Good morning to your son. I love seeing y'all together. That's Florence. I ain't no more kind of time. I believe you're tricking me. Tippy, oh, I know it's the hour head up. Look at everybody gonna tell me what time it is now. Everybody wanna tell you what time it is about five people. All the time, Almighty God, Amen. Good morning, gorgeous. You got that free pop. Yeah, I got that free pop. Somebody told me to go get a real one, but I ate them real ones about two of them in the room. When we went with me and I went to lay down. Let it red. You can have a testimony without a test. You about to say that again, Tamika Nickelberry. Time fly when you're having fun. Well, I wasn't having fun at first, but I guess I was having fun. I always have fun with y'all. I share my good, my bad, I be crying one minute, laughing the next minute. I told y'all, y'all, I'm going to be diagnosed with anti-bipolar. Well, I tell my children, they anti-bipolar, um, anti-social bipolar crazy. 
I am going on YouTube Music. Go ahead, Sarah. And then both laughing and said, YouTube, yeah, she ain't never heard the song. I know she ain't got the CD. What else she gonna listen to it on? Oh, what y'all be having them? Y'all be having them other music things. I'm old school. I don't know. I just know YouTube. <laughs> mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Thank you for all the wonderful wisdom this morning. Better days are coming. Oh, yeah. Have a blessed day, sweetheart. We're going to have a blessed day. What you laughing at right here, um, Stephanie? You made me buy popsicles yesterday. Girl, you want to buy them popsicles in while you were hot? They be good, though. And I don't know how I got stuck on them. I ain't know I these popsicles like this. But my taste bud been changed since all this happened. For a pop ticket go on now, boy. <laughs> Who made that flavor? <laughs> Which brand? I don't know. I get the one. Oh, no, I can't just say that because I did get the name brand. It was some Kool Aid kind. But they were smiling. They ain't taste right. I like the one the old school was in the beginning. Hold on, I got another pack. Hold on. I got a fresh pack. Hold on. I like these kind. <sighs> Fun pops. I like these kind. I, I even tried the Kool-Aid brand. They weren't that good. They were smaller, too. I'll tell you about that. Three of them at one time. I used to these, I guess. The end. I'm a little more sweet again now. Hold on. All right, y'all. We happy now. We straight. All I got to do. Not throw in the shower. All I got to do is lay at night. So I just put on my clothes. While you doing that, we'll be ready. I ain't worried about it. I don't know how hey, now. Them just gonna swoop right away. Gonna flat out a little bit. To bring back the life of baby. I ain't got time. Shoot it right down there too. Life is life. Life is what it is. Better be glad I still ain't looking like Miss Celia. Cause baby. Get that bad. It's 11 in Jersey. Oh, I'm glad I ain't in Jersey, baby. It's gonna be time to go to church. Oh. Hey. Her face, another whole story. Her. I love y'all. Let me go on. Get up. It's okay. We always have our good times and our bad times, but it's always good God time. Amen. And I love y'all. Yes, I love that you so real every and full of love. Bipolar here too. Oh yeah, with my I said she said, What is called again? It's called Antisocial Bipolar Crazy. That's it. That's it. That's how I live. Just a little anti-social bipolar crazy. I love y'all. Have you ever been to New Jersey? No. They said, well, for them today. Oh, baby! First of all, they send the plates at the church. No, I'm going to give me a plate at the church if it's if it, if it good. If they got some good food on there. Oh, excuse me. And then second of all, you know, we're going over Grandma's house. And then, y'all know Grandma made that lemon pie for me. I got it in the refrigerator. She made her too. And I got mine in the refrigerator. I, I, be, 
I ain't able to be I'm gonna say I was killing it, but I ate two pieces that one one night. That was okay, last night, Saturday, that was Friday night. Grandma told me come get them come get this pie off my refrigerator. So after the after Lonzo um thing, I had to go get my pie. And then Lonzo had left with the folks uh T V and I mean remote control and the telephone. I said, Boy, what's wrong with you? What you were trying to do? But we've been to get ready to go, y'all. Old school, can them be the one we grew up on? Yes. The ones in the red neck. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eating good then, yes. But I love y'all. Let me get out this thing for real. For y'all have me still up here talking. Not, not even. I'm going to church. I told y'all. I'm going to church today. I'm taking pictures and stuff. I love y'all. Y'all have a good day. Y'all have a good day. Y'all have a good day.